Okay, so right now we're going to go over how to use Contact Form 7 on a WordPress site that has Visual and Composer installed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to the Contact uh, tab, which should be right here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new contact form. So you're just going to come down here and go to Add New. Okay, so this is the internal name, so this can be whatever we, will, we want it to be, but we want it to be relevant. So I'm going to say um, new contact form for contact page, for example. And I'm going to put a date just so we know when it was created. Okay, so by default, this is how the contact form works. So this is a short code, and so this makes it be a text field. This makes it be an email field. This makes it be a subject field. This is a text area. And this is a submit. So these things in this bracket. So this is what actually gets distributed on the page. And so what gets emailed is when you come over to mail. And so you'll notice it says from your name, from your email. So these brackets, so this is how you know who it came from. And if you look back at the form, you'll see the exact syntax. So it says your name in this bracket and then this is just the describe the description so this is the actual text so this is the this is what it looks like to create the form but then this is how it actually outputs the data so you can see your message you can actually see them right here you can see the things that are getting pulled in so how would you create this well it's pretty simple so you'd obviously want the submit button be, to be at the end and you can change this to say contact us or anything like that but you just put your cursor in here and then you can add any of the fields so you can kind of see oh I want to add a, uh, a text field so you would make it required and then you can see how this short code gets filled out so if you don't have it required it's just gonna say text and so you always have to give it a name so we might say you know organization name I'm just making this up because I'm not looking at the current requirements and then you could even have a placeholder text you could say something like enter your organization name, dot, dot, dot. And then this is for extra styles. And so then you can actually see how the short code gets generated. So if I go to insert tag, it puts it in here, okay? So now if I go to save, it's going to output a short code right here. So this is how I would make this form show up on my page. But you'll notice we added this new organization name, but we didn't in the mail. You can see that this is dark. It's not a little less less dark. And so this means we didn't add this short code. So if somebody enters in this information on this field, we're not going to get an email because we don't actually have it in the mail section. So you can see it's going to go to this email. You can see the from. We don't actually have it. So what you would do is you'd go to you'd copy organization name. And then you could paste it in, just like that. And then you could go organization name, and then go like that. And so for this, for testing, you know, you'd switch this to your email. So you could test it out to make sure it works properly. Um, and so I'm going to do so from, I'm going to do it's from your email, just like this. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now I'm going to go to save. And so with this theme, we actually have, an, um, okay, so this is saying that the sender is not coming from the email because it wants to only send emails from the, from the actual person. So um, what this means is we could do something like no reply at mindlove.com and then um, we would do additional headers reply to your email so that way this is actually coming from an email from MindLove. So the server will fix this error. And then if we actually hit reply, it'll actually go to the email that they entered in. So I'm going to resave this. Just so you can truly understand how Contact Form 7 works. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to create a new page. I'm going to copy this short code.
and just to be super 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 fast contact page demo so look at the requirements of what you need to do I just have it on visual and I'm just going to just paste this short code in just like this and I'm just going to go to preview just so you can see how this would work do -do -do -do, do -do -do -do. okay now you can actually see this <laughs> you can't actually see the text because it's white and the fields are very hard to see um, so I would recommend you know the first thing I would do is probably take this out click the page builder like this and then actually use use some kind of a template that has I don't know a um, let's actually do maybe there's actually a contact no there isn't maybe a call to action I'm just looking for a centered area so we can just just so you can see what this might look like um, without changing the text color or anything like that so let me see here we'll just do um, I'll just do, let me do this one okay so I just created this real fast so now I'm going to add text block now I'm going to add the short code in here now I'm going to go to preview see what this looks like Okay, we still have it. It's still very light, so we can't see it. So this is going to be a setting within um, within here. So we'll probably actually want to click this, make sure we have dark text. Okay, text color dark is selected. That's good. Make sure this has dark text selected as well. And let me make sure this works. Font color. Let's go to black. Um, let's do that. Let me just see what this looks like again. And if it's still being a little, being a pain in the butt, then I'll show you what to do. Okay, so it's still not actually changing this text color, which is fine. So what we're gonna do, the cool thing about Salient is, gotta save the best for last, is that it actually has a feature built in. So I always like to put rows inside of rows so you have more, um, control over the formatting and so then once I click in here I can actually click contact and look at this contact form 7 beautiful so you don't even need to add that short code you can actually just select contact form 7 as one of the modules and you can actually select which one right here so now if I go to save now I'm going to go to publish so let's just see what this looks like and it might be more of a styling thing that we might have to edit, which is totally fine, which we can um, we can work together on. I know this theme is a little stubborn sometimes with the uh, with the actual colors. So let's see what we got here. Okay, so we have the form. So we we actually we just need to add like a background. So I'm just going to come over here to this row. And so now I'm kind of stepping outside of the immediate task of a contact form, but just so you can get an idea, if I do the black or actually let's do um, like this blue and then I'll do like 0.7 and then I'm gonna give give it some padding five percent padding on all sides and go to save now I'm gonna delete this row up here now I'm gonna click update so now we'll have a nice contact form with a blue background with white text and it will just look very very beautiful so there you have it right there and so how does this work you can see we have enter your organization name is that text and now if I click send there's gonna be an error message because I didn't enter in anything and so you can actually okay one or more fields have an error please check and try again so if I go back into my contact page I can come into messages you can actually see one or more fields have an error. Please try again. So you can edit these right here. The form, as you can see right here, these reflect all of these fields right here. So if you wanted to add more, or if you wanted to change these, 
you don't actually need to have this label text. Like you could just have it be, um, for example, let me copy this. And then if I just got rid of that, got rid of this, clicked save, now it's just gonna, there's nothing gonna be there. It's just gonna say, it's just gonna be this empty field for your name. So you can see it doesn't say anything. So if we wanted to have a placeholder text, what we could do is we could come in here, and if you don't know the syntax, like how to do this, you can come over here and go to text, make it required. You could say, okay, your name new, default valid value, you could say, enter your name, dot, 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 and then use this as a placeholder. And then go to insert tag. And now you'll see how this got changed to enter your name. So now if I go to save, I'm going to have two name fields, so that's not what we want to go live with, but you'll notice, um, see, so this is that name one, and then enter your name right there. And so this would be fine and dandy. I could just delete this one, but remember if I delete this one, the actual mail, you can see I have your name new isn't there. So what I would do is I'd actually just copy the placeholder text right here if you wanted to, and you could place it up into this one and then get rid of this one because this is the your name which is right here which we have getting pulled in right here and so this is how you could build this out and so this label stuff is just the default stuff within WordPress um, if you don't want to use placeholder then you could do it like this how they have you know this, so this isn't a placeholder text it's just like kind of floating above so I would say you could actually just keep that. And so I'm just going to paste back in what I deleted. So you can kind of see this. So we probably don't need a subject. You would probably rearrange this to have organization under email. You would probably say, change this to be sign me up, exclamation. Click save. Now if I refresh this, you'll see these options will change, this subject will disappear. Beautiful, so let's test to see if this works. Shane, come and just a test. Yeah, now if I click sign me up, we should have a confirmation email message right here. Thank you for your message, it has been sent. Okay, so that should probably be changed because we're not, I didn't really send a message. So I would come over here and go find it uh, thank you for your message that has been sent. So I would say thank you for signing up to the, or how about this? Thank you for contacting my love. Someone from our team will get back to you within two business days or something like that. And then you can save. And so now when somebody gets to this point, this is what this would say. So this is how you build out a form. Um, just to show you one other option with contact form seven is there's radio options. There's all, there's all kinds of stuff. So let's say you wanted to make them select options. You could actually do a drop down. So you can make this required. This is just a default name. So I would always edit it. So you can say something like drop down. It's just like naming files, no spaces, no special characters. So drop down for contact page. And so then you could say, you know, um, I listen to podcasts daily. I listen once a month. I never listen. I have no idea what a podcast is. And then you would get to insert a blank one at the beginning. And then we go to insert tag. So we have this. I'm going to click save. We probably want a description though. So, you know, if you're going to add a random thing, so you'd probably put text right here and say, how often do you listen to podcasts? Again, this is just a demo. I have no idea if this is even relevant. So don't, um, don't follow <laughs> what I'm actually doing content wise, but this is just how it works logistic wise. And so now remember, if we added this new thing, we're going to have to add this short code to the mess, the mail section which it will tell you because it's dark. So we need this to be copied. 
and then paste it in down here to say how often do they listen to podcasts and go like this and then enter again and so this would be um, this would be that selection so if I click save come back over here again I'm gonna hold shift click refresh to clear the cache and now you'll notice there's gonna be a drop down form in here as well so now I have my name, my email, your organization name, how often you listen to podcasts. You can see I have it right here. So it's pretty neat. It's pretty pretty beautiful. You can just do this very, very quickly. You can control the, the styles just like you normally would um, using Visual Composer. And uh, that, should, that should really get you going. So let's just make sure that the email came through so you can see what it actually looks like. Let me see. Shane. Okay, beautiful. So I got this email, mine love, your subject from your subject body. Okay, so we want to get rid of your subject because that's not coming in. So we would want to we would want to edit that. So let me jump back out and show you how to do that. So for the subject, we should actually just change, you know, mine love contact page sign up. Um, we don't need this in the message body because we don't actually remember we deleted the subject from the form so nobody's filling out the subject the subject is just going to be whatever we call the subject so then that should make it look a little better so then i'll do a save and then you could just um do a test again make sure it's coming in from the right place you know add the correct link at the bottom of this so you know where it's coming in from so like what I like to do specifically is I would come down here to the end and then say this email was sent from, from this. So I would actually contact or copy this URL, paste this URL here just so you can keep track. And then there's actually another option. So we can actually email the person that contacted us. So if we wanted to email us as a notification, then we could also email the person's email which would we'd use this code right here. So then we could actually email them again using mail too. But for now we don't need to do that. So this is how you use contact form seven. Come to the contact page, create it first, and then go to your actual page. And then you can just select contact form seven or add the short code. And then you can customize it using CSS or any of the other options to get it to look how you want. So that is how you use Contact Form 7 in a WordPress site that has Visual Composer installed. And in our use case, we're using Salient, which is available on Theme Forest. Thank you for watching.